high. This is example number two of section 18.4. So here we have this pendulum that is 50 kilograms, has a mass of 50 kilograms, and rotates about point A. And is released from rest when theta is equal to zero, and they want us to find the velocity when theta is 90 degrees. So this is a problem that involves weight, which is a conservative force and involves velocity. So the best approach that we can use is the principle of work and energy. So the principle of work and energy There's several ways to write it, but uh, the way that I like to write it is that the work done by non-conservative forces is the total energy in a second position minus the total energy in the first position. So this is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy minus the potential energy minus the potential energy. What forces do we have here involved? As I say, we have two forces in A, which is the reaction forces of that P, but we do not have any displacements of that point, so those forces do not work. We have the weight of our pendulum, but the weight can be considered a conservative forces, so I will calculate it as a potential. And then we do not have any non-conservative forces, so we can say that the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to zero, so in this case we actually have a problem of conservation of energy. of the two positions, so T2 plus V2, so kinetic energy plus potential energy in the second position is equals to kinetic energy and potential energy in the second position. Since we start from rest, we can say that the kinetic energy in the position, the initial position is equal to zero. And then we will have to calculate the potential energy in the initial position and in the final position and the kinetic energy in the final position. So we put a datum here to calculate our potential energy. And if we put that means that the pendulum starts in the in the horizontal position, that's our first position. As if we put our reference there, our datum, we can say actually also that the potential energy is equal to zero. And then we will have for the second position, which is in, in 90 degrees, right? which is where we are being asked to calculate the, the velocity, we have to calculate this distance to be able to calculate how much we have lost energy, potential energy, right? So we here we say the potential energy, the potential energy done by weight will be, this is loss of potential energy, mass, gravity by that height, when this is the height that we're talking about, and that height is actually the same l uh, length of that pendulum. So that will be negative 50 times gravity times that height, which is 1.25. And V1, we already said that is zero. And the kinetic energy Since we have the radius of gyration about the point A from one axis perpendicular to the plane, we have to remember the definition of, of radius of gyration, right? Which is the square root of the inertia over the mass. Therefore, we have that our inertia is that radius of gyration squared times mass. So we will calculate the kinetic energy respect to point A. And as you remember, the equation to calculate that is one-half mass velocity A squared plus one-half moment of inertia angular velocity squared plus. And then we have that term that usually is zero because we always choose a point to calculate that kinet uh, kinetic energy that has a velocity zero, but I like to write it anyway. So this is the complete formula or equation to calculate the kinetic energy respect to a point. Remember that the kinetic energy is a scalar value. So it doesn't matter where you calculate it from, you will get the same value. However, it's very important that if you use point A, you use 
0.8 in the three terms. If you use the center of mass, you see you will have center of mass here, the moment of inertia center of mass here, and this term will be zero because you don't have any uh, dimension from the center of mass to the center of mass. So this will be zero, and then if you calculate the kinetic energy over the center of mass, you have only two terms. So since this point A is equal, the velocity is equal zero, we have this equal zero and this equal zero. So finally, the kinetic energy will be one half the inertia, which we have, that is, uh, where is it, 1.75 square times the mass, which is 50, times angular velocity, which is actually our unknown. At the end, we have only two terms, and we plug it out into our conservation of energy equation, and then we have that one-half times 1.75 squared, 50 angular velocity squared, minus 50 gravity times 1.25, that's equals to zero. And from here, the only unknown is uh, angular velocity, so we solve for angular velocity, and we get that our angular velocity is equal to 2.83 radians per second. And that's the result we were of the variable that we were asked to find, which is the angular velocity of the pendulum for theta equals 90 degrees.